guys, what's up? Today I'm gonna to be reviewing the Kylie Cosmetics Purple Palette. This was released as part of her fall collection, I believe, but this is permanent, at least from the information I've been able to gather from the internet. On the website, it is $42. Shipping is free if you spend $40 or more on her website, so I obviously got this shipped to me for free. The shipping wasn't that fast. I ordered this on the day it launched, which was a Friday. I didn't receive it until a week and a half later, so I received it not the following Wednesday, but the Wednesday after that. This actually came to me the same exact day as the Cat's Pajamas palette, the Laura Lee Cat's Pajamas, Cat's Pajamas, whatever palette, this palette. They shipped like from the same place at the same time, following the same route. This one took a little bit longer. The Laura Lee palette took like four days. This took like a week and a half, which kind of annoyed me a little bit. Like, why did you release it? Why did you launch it if you weren't gonna ship it for another week and a half? Cause I mean, it got to me within two days from the day it shipped. So they, it was over a week that they processed my order, which I didn't quite understand. On their website, it says it might take a little bit longer for like launches, their actual shipping. And I do appreciate the shipping is free but it did kind of annoy me that it took so long. But then again, I'm Amazon Prime generation. So I'm like used to getting things like a lot faster. So there are nine shadows in here. There's about 1.4 grams of shadow in each pan. This is actually the first Kylie palette or first Kylie product that I have ever bought in my life. I've never really had any interest in her lip kits because they are really expensive and I think that they're dupable. So that was just never something that I was interested in. Um, I have been kind of interested in some of her palettes in the past, but I've never really taken the plunge because I've always seen them as dupable. I've always seen the potential in just buying a different palette that has the same shades in her or just being able to kind of buy singles for the special shades in the palettes that she's come out with. This is actually the first one I've ever really taken a match massive interest in and it is because well it's uh purple i love purple it's also my brother's favorite color like he seems to paint a lot of his cars purple <laughs> i don't know i I love purple always that. All right, anyway, this is obviously not in pristine condition. I have been using this for about a week now, maybe a little more. Spoiler alert, I like this palette, actually. Not necessarily all the shades in it, but the color scheme, I actually really like it. Every time I buy a palette, every time I decide to buy a palette, it seems like there's always one or two shades that sell me on it. I look at a palette, I see a few colors that I just really, really love, and then I look at the rest of the palette and how I can kind of use that to have fun with the colors that are really drawing me in. That being said, these are the two colors, this dark matte plum shade and this blue violet shade. Those are the ones that really, really sold me on this palette. I love this shade as a transition shade. I saw this shade right here, which at first glance I was like, meh, it's just gray, whatever. I love this blueberry shade. I absolutely love it. I can't believe how much I love it. It just seems like such a basic shade, but at the same time, it's just so interesting. There is no black in this palette, unfortunately, but this really kind of serves the same purpose with this color scheme. I will say there are a few that I am, um, well, there are three. They're not my favorites. This one right here, this gold shade that almost looks like pressed glitter, when, especially when you first get it. And then these two shades, or right down here. This one doesn't really hold together very well without wetting it. And even after I wet it, I still get a whole lot of glitter everywhere. This one has a very interesting texture. I'm not really sure how to describe it, but shadows like this are generally not my favorite. There's one I got at Victoria's Secret a long time ago, one of their wet dry shadows, and it had the same kind of quality. It had this very interesting, like it was really pretty color in the pan, but then it had this almost like ashiness to it. And that is what this one reminds me of, which is also kind of what one of the the Laura Lee shadows reminds me of. I think it was the out the other shade in that palette that has that same ashiness that I'm not really a fan of. But obviously there are worse eyeshadows on the planet. It's not that this is bad. It's just, it's not something I personally like. Okay, I'm not saying nobody would like it. And then there is this one. Okay, so this eyeshadow, this formula seems to be popping up in a lot of palettes that have been coming out lately, particularly palettes that I myself have purchased. It's a very stiff formula. It has like a holographic kind of shift to it. Of all the ones that I have, this one's actually not so bad because this one is a darker and it has a lot more pigment in it. It's just a different shade. So I think that this one works a lot better. It's not my favorite formula to work with. The iridescence is actually really pretty, but I'm gonna show you swatches of the other two that it compares to, in my opinion. The Lime Crime Pocket Candy Palette this purple iridescent shade, very floss. Different formulas, but same kind of 
stiffness to the formula and that same holographic iridescent shift. And then there's one in the Lorac Mega Pro palette. This one is called Unicorn. Obviously a different formula, but it just has that same iridescence to it. I don't really have a whole lot of luck with shadows like this because I don't really have a lot of luck with them showing up on my eyelid. Unicorn's on top. The Kylie one is in the middle. The Pocket Candy one is right here. Let's talk about the packaging. I don't know why I never started the packaging. I really, really like this packaging. I think it's really pretty. I love the design of it. You can see as it catches the light, the different colors there on the packaging. I think it's beautiful. I love how minimalistic it is. I love that it's glossy. It doesn't get dirty. It's really nice. Now there is one gripe I have about this packaging and it's the fact that the shade names are not inside on the palette. What really annoys me is when they actually name the shades because they're right here on the back, but then they don't put them on the front. I just don't understand that. Like as far as I'm concerned, these have no names. If they're not right there beneath them, they have no names. That's like my way of thinking when I look at a palette. Kind of a nitpick, yes, but <laughs> Something that has to be said. Overall, I really am glad I purchased it because I think that the colors are interesting. I don't own a whole lot of purples myself. So to me, it was worth it to get this palette. But if you only want a couple of the purple shades, are they dupable? Probably. You could probably find one on ColourPop or Makeup Geek that are gonna be similar enough. However, purples in general are kind of difficult to formulate and I'm not a cosmetic chemist or anything. I have read a little bit about it, about why they are so difficult to formulate and it has to do with the fact that purple pigments are pretty rare in and of themselves. They're not easy to come by necessarily. There are only a handful, I guess, of purple pigments out there. So to formulate a purple eyeshadow, you just have to be very resourceful to my knowledge. That being said, these purples are absolutely amazing. They're blendable, but at the same time, they're not too blendable that they're just going to fade away and kind of muddy up into one another. There's a really nice balance in those between the pigment and the blendability, and that's really important to me in eyeshadow. If you watch any of my other reviews that's very important to me that they're pigmented enough but not too much so that they're still blendable but not too blendable so anyway I am gonna show you this demo obviously this is a more dramatic look I wanted to use as many shades from this palette that I actually could in one eye look just because I wanted to you know I wanted to give you a demo so I used all of them except for these two purple smoke and amethyst Anyway, let's go ahead and get to the demo and I will show you how I got this look. All right, so first I'm gonna get into the swatches and I'm just gonna do finger swatches, not really pressing too hard in the pan, just kind of swirling my finger around in there and doing a swatch. So next I'm gonna do some brush swatches and I'm gonna be wetting my brush with the Pixie Glow Mist. As you can see, the old chunky one is just really kind of hard to work with. Not my favorite. And I'm gonna do dry brush swatches of the mattes. This one I will say, when you wet your brush, which you kind of have to do with this, just to get it to show up. The formula of the eyeshadow tends to kind of turn to like a gummy kind of state. I don't know, it's very strange. It definitely is prone to hard pan, which is that like film you'll get on the top of your eyeshadow. And that's really the only one in the palette that I've noticed does that, but it's, you know, not ideal. The one next to it, I just don't think is very special. It's kind of ashy. And then of course, one of my favorite shades, which is the blueberry shade. And there are all the brush swatches. So there I'm showing you that amethyst shade and what it kind of turns into when you wet your brush and put your finger in it over and over again. As you can see, it just turns very, I don't know, it just gets this weird film on it. It's just kind of weird. Now for the demo, I'm actually gonna start with that transition shade in the palette. I'm just gonna put that in my crease with a large fluffy brush, not being too precise about it, but I am gonna build it up. Next, I'm gonna go into that lighter purple shade in the palette, and I'm gonna take that on a smaller yet still fluffy brush. It's a crease brush by Real Techniques, and I'm just gonna kind of put that on the outside of my eyes. You can see it blends really, really well, especially for a purple shade. It just, it really does blend well, and I love the way it looks. I'm gonna go in with that blueberry shade and I'm gonna use an e.l.f. 
crease brush right on the outside on the outer V of my eye. If you ask me, it's not so much an outer V as it is an angle bracket. It's an angle bracket. But then I'm going back in with that lighter purple shade that I initially went in with and I'm just going to kind of build that up right on the inside of that angle bracket. And this is a look I would wear on its own and I have worn on its own with some mascara. I really love it. It's just such an easy way to wear color. But for the sake of this demo, obviously I'm going to use as more as many colors as I possibly can. Then I'm going to that gold shade with a damp brush and I'm going to build that on the inner part of my lid and you're going to be able to see how it builds, which is, I will go ahead and tell you, not that easily. You can kind of see the glitters getting everywhere, despite the fact that I did wet my brush. Just not my favorite shade to work with. It's pretty, yes, but it is kind of a pain in the butt. Trying to kind of blend that seamlessly, and then I'm pressing it into my lid with my finger to kind of make sure it all holds together. And then I'm going to do a wing. I'm going to go back into that light purple shade and I'm going to go onto my lower lash line with it. I'm just going to blend that out with a small fluffy brush just to kind of keep with that same shape that I've got going on on the top. Then I'm going to go into that dark purple shade and I'm going to use that on a really flat brush. This is an elf brush and I'm just going to kind of put that close to my lash line on my lower lash line. And then I'm just going to kind of blend those two together as best I can. Then I'm going to go in with that blueberry shade and I'm just going to smudge that right on the outer corner just to kind of blend that wing into my lower lash line. I'm going to highlight my inner corner with that light shimmery purple shade. So then I'm going to go in with that matte lilac shade and I'm going to put that on my brow bone to highlight. Alright guys, that's going to be it for my review of the Kylie palette. For my final thoughts, my final verdict, if it's not already obvious enough, I really, really do like this palette. Is it worth the $42? Um, I mean, I guess it really just depends on what you've already got in your collection. Like, it, to me, it, it was because I like just having them all in kind of the same palette. At the same time, you know, $42 is a lot for a palette where three of the shades, to me, are just not going to be things that I reach for. But I don't, I mean, I definitely don't regret my purchase. I really, really do like this palette. I think the colors are unique enough for me to justify the price of this palette to me. I like that it's just very sleek. I like everything about how compact it is. I like that it's travelable. Oh wait, travel friendly. I'll admit this palette has forced me to take this brand more seriously. I think that this is actually a really nice eyeshadow palette, not just for Kylie's fans. Obviously I'm a lot older than her. I'm not in the generation. I'm not like a huge Kylie Jenner fan or anything like that. So that's not why I bought this palette. I bought this palette because it looked like a really nice piece of makeup and it actually turned out to be. I won't count out the rest of her stuff in the future just because, oh well, you're not paying for anything but the name. Part of me kind of feels bad for ever even thinking that because this is is, is this legit? You know, I really like this palette and I will continue to use it. Anyway, I hope you found this review helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you want to, leave me some comments and we will chat down below. If you're not subscribed and you want to be, just click the subscribe button on your way out and I will see you next time. Peace out.